Okay. Uh, good afternoon to all. Uh, I have something to inform you about the examination. Uh, first of all, we are going to have the examination. Uh, following this is going to be on May the 16th. It is is Sunday. The exam will start at 8 p.m. till 9:30 p.m. Okay, you will be prepared for this. There are some instruction, very important instruction that I post to the Facebook already. First, the examination will include from chapter one, chapter two, chapter three, and chapter four. And the examination will be in the form of multiple choices. There are five choices to you guys to select A, B, C, D, and E. The examination will be based on the Google form and we will use the Google Classroom to administer our examination. The student must work on problem before turning. That means if we have 70 problems and then if you work for 69 problems, you cannot turn in your work and you could get the problem if you turn in late. I won't accept your work, okay? And then the second, the examination will be in the form of open book, open everything and open the calculator. It's up to you which one you like to use. And one most important is, only is, you must work on your own. No communication with author, people, excepting your lecturer, excepting me, why the live group, only, okay? Means conducting or cheating, you will be punished in according to SQT rule and regulation. For sure, you could going to get zero score for this, okay? And the third, the third, student must enter the, the Google Classroom at least five minutes before our examination time. That means you're supposed to enter the Google Classroom at before, not after, before 7.55 p.m. Okay, I like you guys to have at least five minutes of preparing yourself and for waiting for the assignment. Okay, it's going to take uh, like a five minute time sometime to get the link for the Google form. The student must log into the system as shown here. The email over here must be in the domain of g.sut.th. Okay, if you won't use this domain, you're going to have the problem later. Okay, and if you don't have one, you still have time to register for this domain basis on the computer center. Ask the computer center about this. And after you finish filling everything, you will get to the problem. So you must solve each problem carefully by following the learning objective and use your knowledge, skill, and aptitude properly. Do it slowly, sure and slowly. Students must plan well and turn in your, way, your work in time. I said in time, okay? That means you should send your work before 9.30 p.m. by placing to the record your work and verify your identity. And after that, you will see the screen show here. And I should note that you must be really careful on this. Since when you send kit, you cannot go back, okay? And the fifth, when you finish, when you finish, you will get the email to confirm your submit, submission to the Google system as shown here, okay? You got the email, thank you, filing out this one. This is the email sent to you, so the Google the Google account g.sut.ac.th 
is really important. The last one, the examination we run on no late policy. That's mean if you are late. Let's see if you send everything by 9.31 p.m., you will get the zero score. But if you have problems uh, with your computer system, with your internet, you please give me what problem you have by the live group. So I will record that and I will I will work with you to solve the problem. Okay, and this is the first thing that uh, I like to confirm to you guys about the midterm examination on Sunday, May the 16th, the first one. Okay, and you can, you can learn, you can study the detail of this uh, in the Facebook group. Second thing, this is the chap this is the week of the week of six, the sixth week. Uh, you guys gonna have the laboratory on the Thursday in this laboratory. Okay, the first group will have the lab 13, the second will have the lab eight, the third will have six sevens and also the, the, the fourth, okay, we have only from the book one, two, three, and four. Okay, that's the, uh, I like to inform you guys about this. And that's all I have for, for the information for you guys for today. And uh, I should start the lecture right now. Uh, if you guys have any question concerning the, the examination, you may send me in the live group. So everybody will know the question and answer and we will share everything together. All right? Okay. Uh, okay, then we come to the lecture. Okay, this is going to be the chapter five. The final examination will include <laughs> everything from, from the chapter one to chapter six, okay? But mostly the final examination will be concentrated on the chapter five and six. On the chapter five, we are going to talking about the characteristic of the test. There are many tests in our study. The first one is in the tension. We have the subspecimen. That is going to be the steel. Is going to be the cast iron, and is going to be the rubber band. If you remember, that's from the uh, uh, number two, and this is for number two, and this is going to be the lab number three, for example. When the, the structure, sorry, when the material specimen is in the tension, is going to what? Is going to follow the Thailand industrial standard. And following this Thailand industrial standard, there are mechanical property of the material that you guys must be known because this mechanical property specified in the TIS and when you buy the construction material such as the steel you got to follow this and then when you test this you got to check the for the steel the first one you got to check for yielding stress the second you got to check for the ultimate stress. The third, you got to check that for the modulus of elasticity. And the fourth, you check for the percent elongation. Each mechanical property have the meaning, such as for these two, it means the strength. It means the strength of the material. 
the ability to resist the external force of the material. And for the E, that means you are shaking for the stiffness of the material. And the last one, percent elongation, that means you are going to check for the ductility, ductility of the material. There are some meaning of the mechanical property of every materials. And according to this, what you supposed to know about is the under the tension, they are going to have the, the stresses, okay? That's uh, 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 going to be the force divided by the A. And then there is some elongation. And then you compute for the strain that is going to be the elongation divided by the length. And then you put the strain and strain diagram. You're going to take this T thing from the stress strain diagram. And you may see this one, you take the stress strain diagram. I make, uh, make an equation or a problem to you. Following this list, which one cannot determine from the stair strain diagram? Okay, that means you got to answer to me. You cannot determine the percent elongation from this stair strain diagram. Okay, uh, what are what which uh, what are the mechanical property for the steel that the Thai industrial standard specify for? So you got to know about this. This is going to be the example for, 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 your, for your examination. The second one, the second one, the second one is in compression. When the material is in compression, what material we test for the compression? We test the, for the concrete. Okay, remember, we also test the brick for the compression. Why? Because the concrete and the bricks are used in the structural member that subjected to the compression. And you also test the timber, right, for the compression. And then for this, again, there are some mechanical property following some specific specification that you must follow. And the third, that is going to be the shear test. In the shear test, there is two things. One is the dielectric shear, dielect shear, and another one is going to be the torsional shear. You guys must be remember what kind of material that we test for the torsional shear. We test for the steel, right? And also we test for the cast iron. What kind of material do you test for the dielectric shear? There is two things. One is going to be in the double shear format. And another one is in the single shear format. We test what for the single shear? We test the timber. And which one we test for the double shear? Uh, we test for the brass. We test for the copper and we test for the aluminum. Again, why don't we test the double shear for the steel? <laughs> the steel is so tough. Uh, it's required a lot of uh, testing uh, machine and uh, the testing equipment. And that's why we neglect the steel. We just test for the brass, the copper, and aluminum for examples for you guys to to, to comprehend the double shear test, okay? And then later you have the characteristic of what? Another one is going to be the fractional test. For the fractional test, we did in the form of three point loading test, okay? We have it by putting the force into the specimen. And there are two reactions, total of three. That's why we call it three-point loading test. We test this one for steel, right? For the cast 
island and we also test the fracture for the timber one is the short timber beam and another one for the long timber beam what are the characteristics of this structural test okay and the last one this is the fatty test they are going to have uh, an, an aluminum aluminum specimen that's that's linked to a motor to spin this specimen but before you spin it you must put the stresses into it when before you start before you start the motor this one going to be in tension and the top one going to be in compression and then when the motor rotates uh, the point subjected to the tension will rotate to the point of subjected to the compression and the point of compression rotates so when you do this the stress will vary in the tension compression like this so the material is subjected to the repeated load that's we call the test of fatty test okay and there is a lot of things that we are going to discuss uh, in the, the test tension test in the compression test in the shear test in the fractional test and in the fatigue test if we possible we should finish the shear test for today okay come to the tension test again we did the test for the my steel and then we will do the test in according to the Thai industrial standard that we have the TIS 116 okay the number of the TIS and this is the year okay the AD and when we take a look at the structural steel intention we supposed to check for four things one the yielding stress the second is ultimate stress the third is the modulus of elasticity the fourth is the percent elongation and when you you accept the steel you gonna accept when everything of this passing the requirement specified by this ts if one of this one passes you must reject the material and the manufacturer must send you the new steel set okay and by doing this we do the tension test and we will do it in or can do the ts and when you do this you will get the stress strain diagram this we discuss in the chapter 4 we did discuss about this in the chapter 4 and at this point you are you are you are <laughs> you are able to determine the mechanical property of this steel how you determine the proportional limit the value of 240 you should be able to do it and what is going to be the yielding stress there is two yielding stress okay based on this one is the upper another one is the lower usually we use the the lower yielding and also what this i called set the lower yielding and the proportional stress they are the same and you can see the value of them are close to each other and we are specify the yielding because the definition of yielding is clearer the method of finding the yielding strength is clearer that's why we 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 use the yielding in strength of the proportional limit and then you can determine the ultimate stress right that is going to be here the fracture stress is going to be here the percent elongation and also the percent of area reduction cannot determine from this stress strain diagram you got to compute and what is going to be the equation of this if you remember the percent elongation is going to be l sub f minus l sub o divided by l sub o and your time 100 percent 
and for the percent area reduction, that is going to be a sub f minus a sub o divided by a sub o and half a hundred percent. Okay, that means you guys need to measure the final length, measure the final cross sectional area of the specimen to be able to determine the percent elongation and the percent of area reduction. And then you can determine the, the slope of this graph, okay, in the linear elastic region, the modulus of elasticity gonna be the chain of the stress divided by the chain of strain. And most of the time, the modulus of elasticity has the chica pascal unit, but the stress, most of stress have the mecha pascal unit. Okay, and the last one, you may need to mean the ability of the material that can absorb the energy during its linear elastic behavior. We call this the modulus of Leslie. And there are examples from the previous chapter. You can go back and study about the way to determine it. Okay, and then the most popular test in our civil engineering material is the tension test and the compression test. How do we select which material you are going to test for the tension test? And if you may recall, you do a lot of, of tension tests for the structural steel. And you did a lot of compression tests for the concrete and also for the brick, okay? There are reasons beside it, behind, behind it. Okay, the first one, you must consider the application of the material in the structure. And you guys know that most of the time we use the steel, we use the aluminum to what? To support the tension in the member. In the form of what? In the form of the rod and tie. Okay, you can see the, the, the basic rod in the roof on the roof of the F4 building. Since what? Since this metal has the high tensile strength. And then this kind of metal must be tested by the tension test. But when we move to the, to the concrete and the brick, we usually use the concrete in what? In this kind of structural member is, is in the column. We also use the brick in the wall of the structure. Most of the time, these concrete and brick are subjected to the compression. And why? Because they have the high compressive strength. And that's why the concrete and the brick test tests by the compression test. So the first one, the application of the material. The second one, we consider the mechanical property of the material. For example, we, we consider the timber. The timber is a material. That's what, that is very special because the timber have the grain. The grain of the timber has only one direction along the length of the tree, okay? But we can use this timber in tension, uh, strength it or not. We didn't use much the timber in the, in the tension, even though it has very high tensile strength in this strain direction. But most of the time we use the timber in the way that subjected to, for this one, to the shear, okay? And for this one, this force, this force can be separated into one in the vertical direction, another one in the horizontal direction. That is going to be 3,000 for the horizontal one, times three over five. This is going to be 3,000, the vertical, that is four, over five. This one going to produce the compression to, to this timber. 
and this one can reproduce the chia first in this direction and see most of the time the timber used in the structure that's subjected to the compression and the shear that's why the timber is usually tested by the compression and by the shear test and you have you have this kind of test in our lab you also have this kind of test in our lab and the third thing is depend on how can you install the specimen under the testing machine yeah the problem is for example is really hard for you guys to cast the the concrete specimen in the form of this uh steel specimen and since the concrete is really brittle if you cast it in this direction and when you put it under the the sorry under the force the problem is is will be broken really easy that's problem is we going to check to test the concrete in the form of split tensile test what is split tensile test the concrete is going to subject that to the loading according to its length and this loading will produce the the reaction here the problem is when you press it this force will distribute will distribute in the arch action like this and to be in the balance of this there is the force that's going to to balance this material point to balance this material point what happened is there is the concrete in the middle of this that is going to subject it to the the like move force this force produce the tension in the concrete and is going to produce the crack along the diameter of this specimen is a genius of our senior engineer to 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 apply the splitting tensile test to test for the tension of the concrete and usually the tension of the concrete is only 10 to 20 percent of the compressive strength very small and then next we come to the specimen how come the specimen of the steel have the shape like the circular because the lot the steel rod or the rebar that we use to reinforce the reinforces concrete they have the circular section so many times the specimen has this circular section okay and there is some plate the steel plate and also there is the steel section such as i such as t such as l for this kind of steel section, most of the time the specimen is in the form of rectangular or rectangular shape. But most of the time the shape is rectangular for this kind of steel specimen. Next, when you notice the, the specimen always has a small portion at the middle this section is reduced because of what because when we test this okay the core decide this one to be fail in this area okay and then you can see the gate length of this specimen is going to be inside this area so our test will be more accurate in this way how come the end of this is have this kind of shape end of specimen is larger than the middle portion i explained to you already but why the link of them must be in this shape it must be in this shape in order the stress can be can be transferred from the end to the middle part of the specimen smoothly okay smoothly 
to produce the stress, the stress transfer smoothly. When stress transfer smoothly, the testing result will be more accurate. Okay. Then there are four types of specimen that should be rejected from the test. The first one, the first one, what we have is the center line of this reduced portion and the center line of the end of the specimen. They are not coincide. Okay, this will produce a, a bending moment when you test it. They are going to produce the bending moment. And then the testing result will have some error. Okay. And the second one, the second one, the center line of the reduced section is what? Is rotate. Okay. This one is, is twisting to each other. Okay. This one also have the same problem. It's going to produce more bending moment in the material in this portion and the testing result will be lower than what it should be. And next, we have what? We have the reduced section here. That's not symmetry. So the load transfer in this area will not smooth. And then it's also, it's also will produce some error in the test. And the last one that we have is going to be this portion is called Hawking. Okay, it's maybe due to the, the, the wrong practice, preparing for the specimen in the wrong way. And there are four defects in the specimen that you guys must note it when you are, you are, you are get the specimen from the, from the manufacturer. Okay, and then the steel and the cast iron specimen they are different. Most of the steel, most of the steel will follow this, this, this standard, okay? But if you come to the cast iron, the cast iron will follow this table here. So just select the, the, the one that's related to the material, the steel or the cast iron. And then come to the tensile test of the concrete. I did explain to you already the speed tensile test, the speed tensile test performed under the STMC 496. Okay. And then what you have is the forces that's applied to the specimen produce the arch action, produce the arch action. And then the arch action will produce the tensile forces at the middle portion of the specimen. And then the crack will occur along, along the, 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 the diameter of the specimen. And then you can compute the, 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 the tensile force, tensile strength. You compute the tensile ten side strength of the concrete by using this function. The P is going to be the force P here. And the D is going to be the diameter. And the L is going to be the length, OK? And the explanation of arch action is here, OK? If you not get what I'm explaining to you, just read this sentences and 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 lead or what we have or we have over here and then the arch action for the crack okay again okay, okay. and then i may ask you in the examination which laboratory is not in the tension format <laughs> something like that or or which the lab material to the for some ratio, which is going to involve with which material is going to involve with the rubber, something like that. And the third, that's involved with the steel and the cast iron. And also we have the circuit tensile test for the lab number seven. 
Okay, this is for lab. Number two, this is for lab. Number three, and this machine is for lab. Number seven, this is the compression machine. This is UTM 20 kilonewton. This is for the Poisson ratio of the lumber test. And then there are some point that you supposed to check when you do the ten, ten shunt test. You got to check the defect of the specimen. Okay, take a note of four of them. Is have which one? And type of testing machine that is going to be the the UTM twenty kilonewton or the the UTM at the F one building, which is going to be the automate UTM. The speed of testing, the behavior of the material doing each region and basis on this if you may recall we have two types of loading one we call load controlling test another one we call it the displacement controlling test the test must be separate when when the specimen has the yielding why because this load controlling test in which uh, your friend use the load and then ask another friend to lead the the dial gate. Okay, the dial gate. If we use the load, the load, the load to control the test. Okay, it asks the when you lead the load and ask the people lead the dial gate. That's called the load controlling test. Load controlling test is good only for the linear, actually, the elastic behavior. So the load controlling test is good for the material such as the cast iron, okay? Because the cast iron has the behavior of linear, of the linear, very close to elastic to failure. Only the load controlling test have the problem with the the plastic behavior. Okay, I will explain this to you later. The displacement controlling test use the network gauge, okay, to list the test. The guy who read the network gauge will ask the guy who read the load dial, the load dial. This one has 10 scale, lead the load. Okay, that is going to be the displacement controlling test. This placement controlling test can be used both for the elastic and plastic behavior. It also can be used to test for the material such as steel, such as the aluminum that has a, a, a yielding okay, for the steel. And this, this placement controlling test used in most of the, the the advances UTM has the this placement controlling test. Okay. Anyway, uh, to know about load controlling test also be good for you to separate the kind of tests in our engineering application. Okay, and also you supposed to check the material is ductile or brittle. The material that have brittle failure is this type of cast iron. The material that can elongate a lot has the ductile behavior. That is the behavior of the steel and the behavior of the aluminum. Okay? Okay, in the detail, the load controlling test, the load controlling test, I use the yellow for the load controlling test, uh, is going to be something that the load use to guide, okay, lead the load and then lead the sustain, is the elongation, lead the load and then lead the elongation. And it's going to have the problem when the, the behavior is nonlinear, okay, and most of the standard and specimen set, this is only good for linear elastic. Legion. 
However, there is another thing called the displacement controlling test. You use the displacement. This is the strain. The strain and the displacement are related to each other. And then you read the diocate and follow by the lead the load diode. This is called the displacement controlling test. And this displacement controlling test is good for all the lithium, elastic, or plastic of the material behavior. Okay? And then uh, we come to the, the failure of the material. We have the cast iron. If you do the test on the cast iron, you can see the cast iron will fail in the form of this. Okay? The cast iron has the carbon has high percent carbon. And then when the carbon mix with the steel, there is the micro crack, okay? It's micro crack in the cast iron. When the cast iron subjected to the, the tension, okay, the micro crack open. And when the micro crack open, the area that releases the, the tension will reduce significantly. And then it's going to fail by brittle, brittle failure. And you can see the failure of the cast iron will be something like this. If you test for the steel and you test for, for the aluminum, the failure of the steel and aluminum will follow this kind of failure. And you can see all of them have the necking. Okay, it will, the steel and the aluminum will deform a lot before it fail. And the section will reduce the size. We call this as the necking of the material. And when it's necking, if the necking shape is symmetry, is symmetry, this subspecimen subjected to a perfect tension. This one subjected to a perfect tension. But if the subspecimen has some kind of defect like this, okay, is maybe indicate the eccentricity of, of tension. That may cause uh, the unsymmetry shape of the failure. You got to check, okay? And there is a lot of things that you got to, to note on this, the appearance of the failure, the, the cracking pattern, the phi of cos one, this is going to be like a cos one, this is going to be a phi one, okay, it may be silky, okay, those kind of things. This is, this is, this is cos because it's in a form of candela. So take a note of that. What the factor that affecting the tension test, okay, and coming back to the theoretical tension test, in the tension test, we expected the tensile force passing to the centroid of the specimen and causing the, the stress, the stress evenly distributed across the material points. And this is the theoretical one. And then if you have the forces that may not be in the centroid of this specimen. What happened is when you cut this specimen, you will have what? You will have the internal moving and internal forces. Okay, this is going to be. Oh, sorry, <laughs> I do some miss some mistake. Last this one. This is going to be the eccentricity load. 
that is going to be the force P of this and eccentric with this one of E. And then when you cut it, you will get this one as the P. And also you will get the moment, okay, moment to resist this one. Okay, summation of F sub Y equal to zero. You get this axial force. And if you take the moment here, you see the moment M is going to be the PE. And what happened is the force P, the force P will produce the, the normal stress, the tensile stress, okay, across the section like this. This one is going to be this one, and then it's going to, to be another one that's subjected to the bending. And as you may see, this one going to produce the compression. So this one may produce the compression. And in this one will produce the, the tension. Then the fractural stress will, the form, will be in the form like this. When you combine them together, based on the principle of what? Principle of superposition, you will have the surface cement that subjected to the stress. Since this one is in tension and this one is in compression, so the stress in this side may be small. Is it this one is in tension, this one in tension, this one going to subject that to a large stress. And what happened is under the eccentricity here, the stress here gonna produce the maximum stress that is higher than is supposed to be over here. That is going to be sigma equal to P over A. But this sigma max is going to be sigma equal to P over A plus the sigma equal to Fy over I. So this is going to be a high stress due to the eccentricity. And what happened is, since one side of the specimen get higher than the average stress, this side will fail early. This point, this point will fail early. Since this one fail early, what happened is, the, the, the load resistance capacity of the material that you have will be the lower one, okay? It's lower failure load than the actual one. So you must prevent the eccentricity of the applied forces by this listening. And next, you also checking for the testing speed, but for the testing speed, for the automated UTM, you can set it easily. But for the UTM that we test by using our hand for the 20 kilonewton UTM, the test is going to be very slow. So that is not effective, the testing result in this case. But anyway, just take a note of this. If the apply load to the specimen is faster than the standard, you will get the higher strength, but you will get the lower ductility, okay? And then come to the failure of the, of the test specimen. There is two things. One is the steel. Another one is the cast iron. For the steel, when you do the tension, tension test, the specimen subjected to the tens, ten, tension load, and then the specimen will subject that to the stress. And the stress cause the necking of the specimen. And what happened is necking is due to the sliding, to the, the sliding of the steel grain. The sliding is occur due to what? Due to the Shear stress. So for the steel, the specimen subjected to the normal stress. When it's failed, it's failed by the shear stress. Okay, it will fail by the shear stress. The steel fell due to the slipping of the plane of the steel gain. 
that's cause what we call necking. Okay, that's produce necking. What produce necking? The shear stress produce necking, and then the failure pan is 45 degree, like this one with the long digital axis of the testing specimen. Okay, for the cast ion, they are different because the cast ion has the micro crack when the Hard ion subject step to the tension load, the micro cap open. And when the micro cap open, the material of the cast ion that releases the force just reduces. Okay. And then what happened is under the application of the normal stress and the 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 Plane of the skill gain open is caused the separation. When it's caused the separation, the failure of this cast ion is due to the normal stress. Okay, and the failure plane is 90 degree. It's going to be the 90 degree angle here. Okay, there are different failure mode between the steel and the cast iron. And this is going to be the abrupt, abrupt failure. It's going to be occur immediately. The failure of the steel is called the progressive, progressive failure, okay, for failure mode, okay. This is abrupt failure mode occur immediately. You can see from the test. And then that's all. <laughs> and then that's all for the 10 side test. And then for the compression, there is a lot of structural member in civil engineering that subjected to the compression, such as what? Such as the column. Okay, such a column. And also, if we have the steel task, for example, the one where that we have like this, and our task subjected to the forces, for example, from the roof, okay, the member here, the 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 member in the top cord of the task like this will also subjected to the the compression. And also in, in the mechanical engineering, for example, when we have the machine like this, the machine is subjected to the loading here. And you can see if you take the moment here, the force, the loading here going to rotate about 0.F in this direction. In this one, we have the hydraulic cylinder. The hydraulic cylinder here will produce this compressive force to resist this one by produce the opposite rotation here. So if you take the moment about F, you can find the F sub CD in this hydraulic cylinder to resist for this type of loading for this bucket. Okay, so the compression also important. And then when we come to compression in, so in our civil engineering application, there is the compression for the concrete, okay? And there is the compression test for the brick, okay? And there is the compression test for the timber. A lot of material in civil engineering subjected to the compression. And then when we do the compression test, we are interested in some important mechanical property, which are the yielding compressive stress, the ultimate compressive stress, and the modulus of elasticity of the material under the compression. And then if you consider the stress strain diagram of the cast ion 
If this cast ion is in the tension, you will have the stress strain diagram like this. If the cast ion tested in the compression, you're going to get this kind of stress strain diagram. Do you remember why the behavior of the cast ions like this? Again, intention. The cast ion has the micro crack due to the carbon in the cast ion. So when it's subjected to the tension, the micro crack open and then it's going to fail immediately or abruptly. But when the when the cast island, when the cast island subjected to the compression, the micro crack close. Not only the milk head close, there is some more song effect. When you compress the specimen, the specimen will has the expansion in the lateral direction. So the cross-sectional area of the cast ion will get bigger. That's why it can take very large compressive load. Okay? Not only the micro clamp cross, that is the Poisson effect that expand the cross-sectional area of the cast ion. And then if you notice for the linear elastic portion of this, and if you determine the, the slope, that means you determine the modulus of elasticity. Okay. Yeah, the cast ion has the same E. Okay, not only uh, when we test in the tension or when we test in the compression. Okay, then we come to the factor that we got to consider when we do the compression test. Again, the eccentricity of the applied forces are important. The axial load that do not apply passing to the centroid will cause the, the non-uniformly distributed stress in the section. The same as I mentioned before, the force P with this intensity will produce this axial load and also will produce the bending moment. It will cause the higher stress in this point of the section, okay? That means one section will have the, the stress that's higher than the average stress. And then the failure will occur over here, okay? This side will fail early with the lower, lower failure load compared to the actual load carrying capacity of the material, such as in this field, we'll have the yielding of sigma supply equal to 250 megapascal under the compression. Since you test it by this kind of eccentricity, you will get sigma supply only, for example, 240 megapascal. This is lower than the actual one. And then there is the second one, is the, the slenderness, should be called the slenderness of the specimen. If the specimen is so slender and you test it, the specimen will subject it to what's so called the buckling. The buckling is not the material failure. The buckling is the stability, stability failure. Okay, when you push the 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 ruler, it's going to buckle like this. When you release the force, it's just take back to the original shape. This is a kind of stability failure. So you want. The compressive specimen is typically have a shot with the large cross section like this one 
for the for the concrete okay the concrete this concrete cylinder we call this is the concrete cylinder cylinder has what has this six inches diameter and has the length of 12 inches this is specified by the ASTM and the TAS okay as the standard to make it uh, quite short to prevent the, the stability failure of the specimen. So when you test this one, the testing machine will need high capacity and, and the measuring device for the deformation must have high accuracy. So the testing machine for this kind of compression test going to be the expensive one. Okay. And by setting this one, the failure of the concrete, okay, will be in the form of the material, material failure is not be in the form of stability failure. So we get the state of the concrete correctly. The third is the friction. As we mentioned about the Poisson effect before, the Poisson effect, if we put this one and if there is no friction, no friction, no friction, the specimen will deform in the shape like this, okay? But the friction force does occur on the contact between the testing machine and the specimen will prevent the lateral expansion. And when we prevent the lateral expansion, the, the area here will subject that to the frictional shear stress at this contact point. And then the stresses over here will be complicated. And since the combined stresses occur here, where it's going to produce what the, the 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 lower strength compared to the actual strength of the material. For example, if you want to prevent this kind of friction here, the ultimate compressive stress of this one, if you said the actual one is 40 megapascal, if you want to prevent it, the test failure maybe get like a 35 meter faster. How to prevent it? For the concrete, okay, you may put a layer of plaster, okay, a layer of plaster between the specimen and the contacting point. That's going to reduce the, the, the friction, okay, by capping the top and the bottom of the specimen. And that's going to reduce the frictional force. And in the past, we also used the sulfur, okay, but the sulfur is dangerous, okay. Many times, uh, most of the time, here we will use a layer of the plaster to cap the concrete, the specimen, okay. By doing this, due to the, the friction and due to the slenderness, of the specimen, the STM E9 specify the height or the length of the specimen. Okay, it said the specimen should not be longer than eight diameter, eight ten diameter, or ten to ten diameter of the specimen. This will prevent the buckling, not so so cylinder. And the specimen also not shorter than 2D. That's prevent the friction, okay, as the contact point. So most of the time, the specimen must be in the medium length or medium surface ratio to prevent the buckling and to prevent the friction at the contact point, okay? And then there is, uh, 
specification according to the STMC 31 and uh, Thailand Industrial Standard 409, the concrete cylinder usually has the diameter equal to six inches and has the length of 12 inches. Why? Okay. The salesman said, most of the time, the size of the atike, okay, that's used in the typical, typical concrete, okay, has the largest aggregate size about one inch to two inches, okay. So take the largest one of the aggregate and and the allowable for for this is three times. So three times two inches. So the specification said the diameter of this is six six inches. And to prevent the friction on the top and the bottom of the contact point, okay, the specimen is said to be 2D. That's why the diameter is going to be 12 inches. The 12 inches is going to be 200 millimeter in SI unit. The six inches is going to be 150 millimeter diameter according to the SI unit. Okay, so that's why we have the, the cylinder, concrete cylinder in the size like this. What kind of lab we are using in the compression test is going to be lab number five. Lab number five, we test the wood or we test for the timber, okay? In compression, that's parallel and perpendicular to the grain of the wood. And then we also have number six, that is the compression test of the brick, okay? And the last one, we have the compression test for the concrete cylinder. So we have five, six, seven lab velocity in the compression test. And the figure below is the, com the compression machine. This is, this is compression testing, test, testing machine. This machine capable for test the wood for test the brick and for test the concrete for 2,000 kilo newton. That is equivalent to 200 ton kilo come. Okay. And this is really large force. And then come to the point of the difference between, between the behavior of the cast iron, behavior of the concrete, or the behavior of brittle material that is in tension and another one is in compression i just explained this to you guys already this one fell fell what's so called abruptly uh, it called fell abruptly because of the open of the metal crack okay but in compression uh, the failure of this cast iron is in the form of of progressive, progressive, progressive mode of failure. Okay, this is at lap mode of mode of failure. This is going to be progressive mode of failure, and due to what? Due to the this one is the open of micro crack. Another one is the cross of the micro crack. This one cross uh, or cross of micro crack plus the what the Poisson, Poisson, Poisson effect. Okay. And what the explanation is over here, you guys can leave it. Uh, I won't repeat it over here. Uh, just give me your an assignment. And then coming to the more the material failure under compression, the above this is for the ductile, ductile, ductile material 
for alumni and for the hot roller that type material and for another one that is for the brittle for the brittle material okay material we have what we have k class and and then we have this one for the concrete okay for the that type material you may see this hot roll steel has the yielding failure and and the aluminum alloy has the the crack okay separate the alloy into two pieces and the aluminum alloy failure very similar to the failure of the K cast iron it has 45 degree crack okay with the vertical line okay this is the theoretical 45 degree however when we test the concrete the crack occur as the angle of 50 to 60 degree with the vertical line why why the problem is this has the five grain okay the the aluminum alloy even though the K cast iron has the grain that is why but the concrete has the sand and the crush crush lock at the cracking pane. This cracking pane cause what cause the friction. When it's caught the friction, it cause the anchor to be larger than the theoretical value. Okay, so. In conclusion, K cast iron and aluminum alloy, aluminum alloy, K cast iron and aluminum alloy fail by diagonal crack. Fail by the aluminum has larger contraction, deform uh, a lot before it fail. And then come to the hot low, that's fail by very large deformation. Okay, and the shape like a barrel that's large deformation causes by the yielding and the last one uh, is a concrete sorry for this it's probably be the concrete the concrete fell by the diagonal crack here before failure a series of crack between cement pass and aggregate will continuously expand okay even though the concrete sometimes consider as the brittle material, but the state state diagram of the concrete in comparison have some shape like this. It's very so-called uh, ductile like <laughs> ductile like it's not a ductile, but it's ductile like mode of failure. Okay, and then coming to 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 this failure for the concrete. Okay, we separate them into two parts. Okay, the concrete, if it's in the cubic. Okay, this one called cube. The concrete has the cube subspecimen, the cubic. We are in short, we call it cube, or you call it cubic. Subspec, subspec, cement. Subspec, cement. Uh, we have this kind of subspecimen following the BT standard. This used in what? In the, in, in the load pavement, because in the load pavement, the application of the weight from the vehicle to the pavement is very similar to this. That's why it's used a lot in the, in the construction of the highway pavement, okay? But for the cylinder, for the cylinder, most of the time the, the ASTM use the cylinder specimen and then the TS also specify this kind of cylinder specimen. Most of these use in what? Use in the, the construction of building. Okay, because in the building, this concrete will subject them to the forces 
similar to the cylinder surface. Anyway, for the for the cylinder, the failure is in the shear cone. Shear cone is something like this. Okay, or the our gas shape. Yeah, and then you can see this in the concrete and in the stone, and also for the mortar. What is the mortar? The mortar is the mix between cement, fine, fine sand, and then water. Mortar is used for what? Is used for the brick to connect the brick together. Okay, when is connect the brick together? Mortar mix with the brick. We call it masonry. Okay, masonry. Uh, in America, a lot of house built by the masonry structure. The masonry structure is beautiful. I love it. But uh, in Thailand, we didn't use much of the masonry as the typical load carrying member of a house. Okay, and for the stone is okay. Just cut it like this. And then for the for the cylinder, that is shear plane mode of failure. This is occur in the cylindrical specimen, or uh, for the concrete and for the cast iron. And the other one is the shear cone with the vertical crack is occur typically in the concrete. This portion fell by the the tension. Not only the shear, that's the combination of shear and tension. Okay, and there is explanation more about it. The crack of the concrete that's larger than the theoretical crack. Okay, previously I mentioned about the friction between the 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 sand, the cement paste, and the cut slot at the crack area that's caused the angle here. To be to be larger than 45 degree. There is also that is going to be the non-homogeneous material. There is also the friction of the of the, the 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 contact point of the specimen and the testing machine that's also produce the crack like this. Okay, then we talking about a lot about the concrete. Come to the timber. Okay. The timber under the compression, okay, can fail in these six different modes of failure. And I should mention that the timber has the grain, and, and if for this one, if the crack along the grain, this is called the spitting. Okay, this mainly due to the due to the 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 Force that's applied and is called the crack, okay, along the grain. And also, there is, if the grain is not really in parallel, there is the shear and compression combined together to produce the crack, okay. This one, the grain has the inclined direction, okay. And sometimes it's also produced the wedge like this, okay. And if <laughs> If we test uh, the timber in the in the perpendicular direction to the grain, if I had a grain like this, and then this is going to be the point, the grain like this, and then you put the force in this direction, okay? The failure of this one may be in the form of clutching, okay? And there is many things about this. Uh, in short, timber. Subject to compression perpendicular to its grain. This is perpendicular to its grain. Fell by clutching. Okay. And for the timber that subjected to the compression parallel to the grain. Okay. The timber may be fired by rupture in the form of splitting of the timber. And then we come to the shear. Next. For the shear test, we did for the steel. If you consider this lot, okay, 
this lot, this book actually the book subjected to what under the application of this force it will produce the force x to this one and this one will produce the resisting force okay by doing this there is going to be the failure plane on this one two of them this called double shear okay the stress here gonna be double shear stress okay the same thing over here the ball subjected to the double shear stress so most of the the metal used for the structure such as ball will subject them to shear stress and shear force and the shear can be separated into the direct shear what i show you previously is the direct shear how about the torsional shear the torsional shear can be found the the, the shaft okay the shaft when we have the shaft in the what be the vehicle the shaft subjected to the torsion okay and the shaft always subjected to the torsional shear okay basis on this the direct shear this one gonna have be the double double shear and this one will cause the crack here this one will be the single shear and then the equation to determine the double shear the force just divided by two okay but for the single shear the force p divided by the a and then this is the example this auger is used to investigate the soil and lock layer under the ground this kind of structural so, member subjected to the torsion during the during operation and then if you do the lock for for 50 meter and then the shaft here fail that is going to be the bad thing you're going to do again so the shaft must be very strong okay when you do the lock and there is another shaft our shaft here okay this is transfer the force by this is the engine to the other part here okay and that's for the machine and for the torsional test okay is considered as the pure shear test for example if you have this line as the reference line okay under the torsion under the torsion is twist in this direction okay this direction and this one twist in this direction what we have is the line shape from the red into the yellow one and then what we have is the specimen usually has this type of rotation we call this one is the angle of twist okay and then we also call the line that's linked here and is going to produce the angle here this is going to call the shear strain okay and then the torsion that's applied over here is going to produce the torsion inside it the torsion will produce the shear stress is going to be tr over j and then we have the j is the polar moment of the shear is going to be pi over 2 r power 4 or it's going to be pi over 32 and then diameter powerful that is for the polar moment of the shear and then you can compute the angle of service to be t and l l is the length of the shaft and then divided by t j g is the shear plus of elasticity that's you we have this cut about this for the previous chapter okay and then there is the relationship you can measure the angle of twist from the test you also can measure the torsion for the torsion you determine the shear stress for the angle twist you determine the shear strain 
and basis upon this, you will get the rotation that occur here. Okay, there we go. By using the ankle, the chair, stand, time, the leg, that is going to be equal to equal to the the radius time the angle of twist. Okay, so by doing this, the shear strain will be R phi divided by L. So you can compute the shear strain from the test, and then you will plot the graph. That is going to be shear stress, and this is going to be shear strain. And what we have the equation, and in the examination, there are a lot of equation we learn from the mechanical. Sorry, we learn from the material, material mechanics of material. So you should be able, you should be able to use or apply the equation. Okay, the equation to the structure, structural member. So I mean. You are supposed to do the calculation for the stress, for the angle of twist, for the shear strain. And I should mention the shear stress unit is in mecca, Pascal, and the unit of the angle twist is going to be the radian, and unit of the shear strain also in the unit of learning. We were about the unit, okay? And then we put the graph. And then we measure the, the tau proportion. This is important because in the design of the beam, we determine the tau allow by the yielding shear stress divided by factor of safety. And many times we define the yielding shear stress equal to the proportional shear stress, okay? Because the yielding point is, is, has, has a clearer definition and the standard, the ASTM, STM and the TAS use the yielding uh, as the representative of the failure of the material. And then just acknowledge they are equal. And this one show what? This one show the stiffness of, of, of material under, under, under shear force. This is different from, from the E, okay? The E is the stiffness of the material under the tensile force. This is, is in shear Force. Usually, G, G is less than E. And then uh, this kind of test will be performed with the tin wall shaft. Why? Because if we use the shaft with the solid one, the stress that occur in the section will distribute all over the section. So the failure occur here, not inside the material. So if we use the solid section, the testing result may not be that accurate. But if we use the hollow section, the stress distribution going to be mostly in the, in the outer portion of the material. So the failure that's occur here is the failure, is the, what's so called, is the material failure, failure. So by using the thin wall shaft, you're going to get the real shear stress strain diagram. But anyway, the shear stress strain diagram and tension stress strain diagram, they are similar to each other, okay? And limitation of the test, the direct shear test keep only the approximation of the shear strength of the material since, since there is major things such as the, the 
small x safe density of the shear force that is the friction of the of the contact surface and the stiffness and the sharpness of the of the steel heads are not that perfect okay for the eccentricity you may consider for the timber you have the specimen like this and then you lock the, the specimen like this and then you apply the force here by the steel head the the apply force will have a small eccentricity here but usually this eccentricity is very small okay so the effect of this intensity is not that much okay and the direct shear only provide for something is cannot provide the shearing bolus of elasticity okay it cannot because it's only provide only the shear strength and when we come to torsion case there is the limitation for the for the for the brittle material because the brittle material didn't fail by shear the brittle failure failure by the tensile stress so the torsion test is not good for the brittle material and then the lab number 10 and 11 that's for the the shear direct shear test for the this one is not correct it must be brace okay for the metal and then the 11 is for the timber and this one has basis on the ASTMC 143 for the torsion test there is something to note okay the specimen must be large enough to get the stand accurately so in our test you may get the stand that not so accurate okay and uh, the specimen must be large enough to reduce the stress concentration that occur at this point. And if possible, the specimen is supposed to be a thin wall specimen. Okay, as I mentioned before, why we supposed to use this? Because the stress for the thin wall specimen occur at the portion of the material. So the, fa the failure is going to be the correct one. And there is three laboratory talking about the shear tests for our class. Okay. And the failure, uh, failure, the last one, the steel. If you remember the steel in torsion, the steel in torsion get the normal stress and then fail by the shear at 45 degree degree actually not called crack necking <laughs> necking okay but the steel the steel the steel for the torsion the steel is a ductile material for the torsion the failure is like this that mean for the steel when it's subjected to the tau the failure of this is due to the tau Okay, this is different from the tension test. And for the brittle material, such as the cast iron, such as the cast iron, the cast iron subjected to stress in tension is failed by the stress, it's failed uh, uh, like this. Okay, it's failed, it's failed. Oh, sorry, it's fell like this. It fell by the crack like this. However, when the brittle material subjected to the shear stress by the torsional test, is fell by the normal stress. The fracture here is fell by to the normal stress. So uh, I like you guys to understand the difference between the failure of the steel and cast iron under tension under tension under tension that's one under the tension and also under the torsion they are different okay and this is the conclusion between the failure 
on this side, this is for the tension. And for this side, this is for the torsion. They are different. And this one, this one for the steel. This one, 45 degree. Okay, for the steel. For torsion, this is 90 degree. For this one, stress cause the failure of tau. This one, this one, tau, sorry, tau, cause the failure of tau. For cast iron, this one is for cast iron, which is a brittle material. The stress, okay, cause the failure of this as the 90 degree, as the 90 degree, which is different. For this one, this one, this one for the brittle cast iron, is going to fail by what? This is the tau and cross the fail by the normal stress. That's what? At 45 degrees. So there are a lot of different here. That's like you guys to separate between them. Okay. And I think that is the end of our lecture. And hope you guys uh, go through all of the chapter one to chapter four for the midterm examination. For the chapter five and the chapter three, that is going to be for the final examination. Okay, I uh, hope you guys uh, enjoy my lecture. If you still have some question, uh, you may like me about the examination. And for the lecture, uh, you will have uh, the video clips uh, in the YouTube. And again, for the examination, I recommend you guys to make a short note, just a, a, like a, the A4 paper, and take everything into your, your A4 paper in order you to, to find it easily. You cannot find everything from the book, even though from the PowerPoint easily. Okay, that's going to take a lot of time for you to, to find the answer for the, for the examination. And again, I will, I should note that there is going to be 60 to 70 problems for 90 minutes. So you guys are supposed to do a, a quick, really quick work on this. Okay, anyway, thank you very much for today. And I hope uh, you guys will follow what I lecture today. And uh, have a good day, taking care of yourself. Okay, be safe from the COVID-19. Bye-bye.